Hi there, Ivan from the Lacroix Cruiser. We're going to do something on a two-stroke Detroit diesel that is a mystery to a lot of people, and that is called running the rack. And that is the adjustment of the governor and the rack for the fuel injection. First thing we need to do is actually remove this cover here. So there's a myriad of bolts. We've already removed them. We take that off. Inside of this mystery compartment is the governor. Let's get a bit of light on the subject here. I have already backed off the buffer screw, which is this screw up here, and that we'll get to later. Next thing we need to do, there's a cover that goes over here that's held on with two bolts. We've removed that cover, and this is the idle screw adjustment, but we won't touch it for now. We need a special tool, and that special tool is a wedge. That's what this wedge is for. Now, if we look down on the bottom here, we have the governor weights. So you've the shaft here and these weights. We need to separate the weights to simulate full throttle. And that's by inserting this wedge and pushing that in. Now, watch here when I do that. Now we have to set this setting here, and this has to be between four and eight thousandths of an inch. And as you can see, we've got way too much space there. So we'll take our three-eighths wrench, and we've unlocked it already. It's like a cooking show, you know, save, save time for you. And we get that feeler gauge just nice and it's not going to go in all the way, but it slides in between the two. There we go. It's nice and tight there. So we'll leave our 3 8 wrench in place, not move it. And then we'll tighten this up. Tighten the lock screw down. Measure again. It's actually a little loose. And basically these lock screws, they take up the distance in the, the thread. So the finer the thread, the less movement you're gonna have with the lock screw. The coarser the thread, the more movement you're gonna have. So I'll just tighten it up a little bit and then tighten my lock screw again. measure one more time. So that is six thousandths of an inch and the spec is between six and eight thousandths. So we'll grab our eight thousand gauge to act as a go no go. It's in here somewhere. There it is. And sorry the spec is between four and eight. That's why I want to set it at six. And the eight doesn't go in. So we know we have the proper setting there. We'll remove our wedge and from there we're going to back out the idle screw because we don't want it interfering with us setting the rack. Next step, setting the rack. So we put our governor cover back on and the next step is to hold this at full throttle. Now, we have an air throttle. We could just put air to it, but we have the engine out of the bus, so not a practical alternative at the moment. I've seen other people using a pair of vice grips on the, um, on the rack. Again, not necessarily the best alternative. So we're gonna use the actual throttle of the bus. And this very elegant solution. Now, it's definitely a full throttle. Time to check the rack. We'll go on this upper head over here to check the rack. Adjusting the rack is a simple thing. On top of the rack, 
you have a lock screw. And a screw. And as we're turning this, watch the fuel injector pin. When we get to the end of the stroke, it will change angles. There we go. So it changed angles a little bit. So we lock it in there. And then we check for bounce. See how it bounces back? That means our rack is perfectly set. Now we'll go to the other injectors. We have bounce on that one. We have bounce on that one. And we have bounce on that one. So this head is perfectly set. The one last thing you have to be careful of is the pin here. Make sure that you can still rotate it. Because if you can't rotate it, then you have too much pressure on your injectors. One other thing while you're in the head that you want to check is are your fuel injector cross tubes correctly torqued and are they leaking? One very easy way to tell if they're leaking is the sound and or if they're properly torqued. You'll notice the sound on this one sounds like a dud. This one has a nice little ring to it. When we torque this one, and the torque is 160 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. And these small torque wrenches don't click, so you won't hear a click, but it has a breakaway feel to it. Go. Now, that same one that sounded like a dud a second ago has a ring to it. So a very easy way to tell if you have a leak in your fuel crossover pipes. Once you have your rack set, you want to verify your valve adjustment and the height of your injectors. First thing we'll do is verify the height of the injectors on this one. We have the engine barred over so that these two rocker arms are acting on the valves so there's no pressure on the injector. And you can pick up these tools and they just go into this little hole here. And it just lightly rubs on the top of this injector. So the fact that it lightly rubs on the top of that injector, we know that that injector height is set exactly where we want it. Next, we bar the engine over so that the injector becomes into play and the valves are no longer under pressure. So we see the injector rocker arm moving now we know the valves are free. So this uses a go-no-go -no -go gauge. It's 15 thousandths of an inch. And it goes in. The 17 thousand part doesn't go in. So we know that valve is set properly. And same here. 15 goes in, 17 doesn't. The other part that you see here is a jake brake. This is a jake brake tool. So to adjust these valves, by the way, one little thing, the adjustment is here on the back. You have this pin and a lock screw. By moving the pin in and out and the lock screw, that will give you your adjustment for the valves on the bottom. Same thing with setting the injector height that is done here. These push rods go to the cam followers and this gets actioned by the cam. So back on the bottom here, we have the jakes. So the jakes, this gauge slides in, and you want to check it on both sides. If it's too loose, it's not, it's gonna move around in there. If it's too tight, obviously it won't go in. 
Now we know that on this cylinder, we have our rack, so we have good bounce on the rack. We have our bounce there. So the rack is set, we've set our valves, we know the injector height is correct, and we know our Jake height is correct. Other than that, we have a few more things to go on the governor once we have all of these, all eight of them set. So the last step, once you've adjusted the rack, you have to put it all back together. Then you start the engine up, and I won't start the engine up because we won't be able to hear me. Uh, we have to adjust the idle. So adjusting the idle is done with this screw right here. You don't want to turn the idle in till you get about 525 RPM, roughly around there. And you can check the RPM using either your dash gauge, not too accurate, or you can get a really cool little non-contact one uh, from many different stores. They use a little sticker like you see here, and you just aim that non-contact tachometer there, and it'll give you a reading to within one RPM. After you've done that, you, find, you have to set the buffer screw. Now the buffer screw is up here. We have Jake brakes on ours, so that's what this switch up here is. But the buffer screw, you wanna turn this screw in. So this is the lock nut here, this is the screw. You wanna turn this in until you bump your RPM up slightly. And when I say slightly, no more than 25 RPM. Once you've done that, you wanna check the adjustment of the Jake brakes so that the when you let off the throttle, it clicks the switch on. Once you've done that, button it all up and go for a drive. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, always remember you can leave them below. You can see us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Thanks a lot and have a wonderful day.